cool. Hey folks, it's Devin here with Make Anything. And a couple weeks ago, I did a video about staining wood filament prints. And for that video, I made these little A-containers, which are just little two-part prints that screw together. They're cute little capsules that can hold some small things, but overall, at this size, they don't have much function. So I did a slight modification, and I turned the acorn into a charm for a necklace. I think these turned out really well, and I could see a lot of people wearing these. So I decided to make a video about it, and since I've already done this acorn necklace, I'm gonna do a different charm today. I came up with a few different ideas, and the one I settled on is a little soft serve ice cream. It's perfect because you got the cone, you got the ice cream, two different colors that you can screw together. The ice cream also has a little swirl on top that you can use to hang it around the necklace, so it's pretty ideal. So today we're gonna make those little ice cream cone charms from scratch, and I'm gonna show you all the steps. So let's get right to it. The first thing I did was sketch out my little ice cream cone on paper. It's a simple idea that I could do directly in Fusion 360, but the reason I sketched this out to scale is that I'm able to actually measure the sketch with my calipers and use that as a reference for the size that I'm gonna make it in Fusion 360. So here we are in Fusion, and I've gotta apologize, the left side of my screen was cut off for some reason in my screen recording, but hopefully you can still get an idea of what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna start out by modeling the cone part first. So I got that 11.3 millimeters from my sketch. From there, I'm gonna use the sketch tools to draw a half profile of my cone, which I will revolve around that center line to create the cone shape that I want. So I'll just go through there, roughly sketching things out and slowly adding dimensions until it's exactly how I want it to look. All right, that looks good for now. So I'll go ahead and select the revolve tool and I'll select all those profiles and make the axis that center line. So now you can see we instantly have a cone shape. Now to hollow this out, I'm first gonna create a section analysis of this front plane, which basically gives me a cross section through the center. Then I'll draw on that same front plane and use the sketch tools to draw out the shape of the revolve cut that I'll do to hollow this thing out. Basically, I just wanna make sure that there's at least a millimeter all around so that the walls don't get too thin and fragile. I also want a straight cylindrical section near the top where I'm gonna add the threads to screw the two parts together. So here's my shape, and I'll use the revolve tool again, but this time I'm gonna cut away from the model. And there we go. Now I can select this straight cylinder part and use the thread tool to add in my threads. You wanna check modeled here to make sure that the threads are actually physically part of the model and they'll print out. And then I'm gonna change the size here to six millimeters, which looks good. The threads aren't too tiny, and there's enough wall thickness that this thing should still print out okay. I'm gonna do one more revolve cut on this plane, and I'm gonna draw these little profiles to kind of smooth out the pointy transitions between the threads and the rest of the model, just to make it a little easier to stick the two parts together. At this point, I kind of wanted to change the angles of the bottom of the cone here, and since this is a parametric model, I should be able to change the values here and have it automatically update. So I played around with that until I got things exactly how I wanted them to look. Now, I didn't perfectly constrain my model, so some things updated a little wonky. So I can go back into those sketches and adjust those as well to make sure everything is still working the way I want it to. All right, so this is a good point to start working on the top part of the ice cream cone. We'll add some more detail to this cone a little later on, but this is a good foundation. So now I'm gonna do another revolve just like before and I'm gonna draw out the top part of my ice cream cone. This sketch basically consists of a cylinder at the bottom where I'm gonna put my other threads, and then there's kind of three squashed circles stacked on top of each other, which will be my ice cream cone, and this long point at the top, which I'm later gonna swirl around to make the loop for my necklace. I worked with this sketch for quite a while, just adjusting little things until it looked just how I wanted to. I used the revolve feature just as a way to preview it, but I'm actually not gonna use that revolve feature. Instead, I'm gonna go into the sculpting environment and do my revolve there. Let me change the visual style here so that I can see the edges, and then I can increase the number of faces on this ice cream cone so that it looks more like the shape that I created. Basically, the more faces you give a form, the more control points you have to modify the shape. Now I'm gonna start warping this form a little so that it can look a little less regular, a little more asymmetric and organic. 
the first thing I'm going to do is create this loop at the top. So I'll select that top section and click the modify button. And I'm going to check this soft modification box, which makes my changes blend into the rest of the form a little more, less abrupt and kind of more smooth. To be honest, I don't know what all these features do, but I'm just going to keep playing around with it and just slightly tilting some of these rings and making parts thicker and thinner until it looks a little bit more like the ice cream cone that I'm envisioning. I couldn't get that swirl on the top to do exactly what I wanted to here in the sculpting environment, so I'm just going to have this kind of swoop and then I'll sweep the rest of the circle around later. Once your form looks good and you're ready to commit, go ahead and hit that finish form button. Once you do that, you can't go back and change everything, so you want to be sure things look pretty good. Now, the finished form is a series of surfaces rather than a solid part. So when I was trying to cut this top part off, it wouldn't let me. First, I had to switch into the patch environment, close off the circle here, and use the stitch tool to combine it all into a solid feature. Now I've got a solid form that I can modify in that model environment. I'll draw this rectangle containing the parts that I want to cut away, and then I'll do a symmetrical extrude cut to delete that top part. Now I've got this flat circle on the top of this swirl, and I'm going to go draw on the front plane and sketch the rest of the loop that I want it to follow. I'm using the spline tool here, which has these handles that you can kind of adjust and modify to get the curve you want. So I'll just keep playing around with that until it looks nice and good. I also made a little two millimeter reference circle here to make sure that the swirl is large enough that I'll be able to fit the metal parts of my necklace through it. Once I'm pretty happy with that path, I'll select this circular face and then open the sweep tool and select that spline as my path. Now you'll see that circular face is swept along the path to create my loop. After I've done that, I'll select this edge here since it's not a perfect transition and I can just use a little fillet to kind of smooth it out a bit. This is going to be so small in the print that you probably won't notice that little edge, but I like to smooth things out and make them look as good as possible in the 3D model. I'll throw in a few more fillets there to smooth things out and that looks pretty good. At this point, I wanted to add that detail on the outside of the cone. So I'll start another sketch here on the front plane and I'm going to project the lines of this cone so that I can reference them and draw these circles right on the edge. I can select all the circles, right click and hit equal to make them all stay the same size. Then I'll draw some lines in between the center points and select those and make those equal as well so that we have equal spacing between the four lines. Now I'll kind of move them into position, I'll give them a dimension that I want and I'll hit the revolve tool. There we go, we've got some rings, and now I just want to do some vertical tubes as well. So I'll start a new sketch on that same plane, and I'm going to project those edges again. Now I'll just draw a rectangle between the two circles that are farthest apart. From the center points to the edges here, I'll close that off, and then I can do a revolve around that rightmost edge. That'll create this little tube that's the same diameter as those rings. From here, I'll select the circular pattern tool, switch the pattern type to features, select that last revolve I did, and then spin it around the center axis. I'll increase the quantity until the spacing looks good, and then I'll hit OK. There we go, we've got our cone design. A few more fillets here to smooth things out, and things are looking pretty good. We still need to add threads to the ice cream half of this model, but when I select the cylinder with the thread tool, it's not letting me make them. So I guess when I used that form tool, it kind of messed up this circle and made it not a perfect circle. So I'm going to cut that away and then just draw a new cylinder that's exactly the same. Once I've made that, I can select it, use the thread tool, once again check modeled, and make sure the sizes are the same as the inner thread on the cone. So basically I'll make that 6 millimeters again, then I'll hit S and find the combine tool, and combine those two parts together. I'll use the move copy tool just to rotate this cone so that we can make sure that the threads are interlocking correctly. So I'll just spin this cone around until you can see that the teeth do in fact lock together. Once again, I want to clean up the transition between the threads and the rest of the model. So I'll draw another little shape here that I can revolve around and kind of clean up that transition. I'll also do another revolve cut here at the bottom, basically to chamfer that thread so that it's easier to connect the two parts. All right, there's our ice cream cone. So now we can just save those STLs out as two separate files and send those to the printer. Here's the top half of the model printing out on my CR10. 
and some of you might notice that my CR10 seem to have changed colors, but really, I just got a second one because I love the printer that much. While I printed the ice creams on my CR10, my BCN Sigma was printing out these cones in the appropriately colored Tan Matter Hackers PLA filament. Here are the two parts, and as you can see, they just screw right together. The threads are pretty tiny, so it does take a little bit of force to really get them all the way together, but it works really well. To turn this into a necklace, I'm gonna use these jump rings, and then I've got these split ring pliers to open them up and connect them to the top of that ice cream cone. I got this really nice stainless steel chain, which I'll cut to the appropriate length using these clippers, and then I'll attach another jump ring to the end here. I'll slip the charm onto the chain from the other end, and then close that end off as well with another jump ring. And on that same ring, I'll also attach this little lobster claw clasp, so it's easy to take the necklace on and off. That's all there is to it. Now we have this really nice 3D printed necklace charm. Here you can see it in several different colors that I printed out. I also printed out a couple cones at double scale, which look really nice, and I'm going to use those to make some keychains. So just like the necklaces, I'll attach the ring to the top of that swirl, and just like that we've got ourselves a neat 3D printed keychain. Another cool idea I had was to dip the ice cream in paint to mimic a chocolate dipped cone. Now I didn't have a chocolate colored paint, but I do have this kind of candy apple looking glaze. I'll just dunk my ice cream straight into the can about halfway, and then I'll hang it upside down for a while so that the excess paint can drip away. After a few minutes, I took that down and stuck it on some Uhu putty at a bit of an angle so that the excess paint can create this perfect little drip, just like a real dipped ice cream cone might have. Here it is after a couple hours, and you can see the paint's already drying, but I'm still gonna give it a couple of days just to make sure that it's completely dry before putting it on the keychain. All right, there you have it guys, these cute little ice cream cone charms, and I think it looks great scaled up as a keychain as well. I'm really happy with how these turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something by watching the process. So maybe you can come up with some other ideas of two-part models that screw together and maybe I'll make them, maybe you can make them. Before I end the video, I just wanna say thank you guys so much. I've reached 180,000 subscribers here on YouTube, so thanks for subscribing, thanks for following my videos, thanks for sharing my videos so I can keep growing. And for reaching this goal, Gearbest has helped me put together a giveaway, and one of you is gonna get a free CR10 3D printer. All you've gotta do is follow the link in the description for that giveaway, sign up, and you could be winning that awesome printer. You guys know I talk about it a lot lately. That CR10 is probably my favorite printer considering the value for the price. It's awesome, so I'm stoked to be giving another one away to you guys. I'm also gonna be giving away some of my prints on Patreon, so if you're supporting me there, thank you, and sign up to win a necklace or a keychain or something else. That's gonna be fun as well. So. Thanks everyone, until next time, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything, don't you ever forget to stay inspired.